let's say the rod has a uh, length L. Uh, Okay, so the rod is in the shape of the semicircle. So this could be our example three. And we can say find the force between that rod and another point charge placed at its center. If you place the charge in the other place besides the center, the problem becomes too hard again. Just like for that one, if you place the charge anywhere else besides the middle point, the integral becomes too hard. So again, the best place to put it is in the center. The other places are harder to do. And we can say, what is the force between this rod and uh, that point charge? So again, we're going to use a symmetry arguments. By the way, we do, it doesn't have to be tilted this way. It could be tilted like this. And it could be, the point charge could be here. So the tilt doesn't matter as long as it's a semicircle and the point charge is in the middle. So we can take a, an element from here and another element from here. Just like we did for a flat rod, we can say this one exerts a force this way, this one exerts a force this way, and again only their uh, y component survives, right? So very similar argument to that one. Only the y component survives. So over here, if it was tilted this way, it would be this one pushes this way, this one pushes this way, and only the x component survives. But it really doesn't matter. The formula is still the same. Should be the same. So, uh, <clears throat> so we can say the df uh, is going to be uh, two. The force is going to be integral two df sine theta. So this is very similar to how we set up the uh, linear rod, but the uh, flat. And then here the df is going to be k dq over r squared sine of theta. And then we multiply this by the, the charge, the charge of this point charge, so times k q2, times q2. Oh. I just want to keep it like this. OK, so uh, we could factor out the, now the, the the difference here between this one and this one, right? This uh, uniform rod, when you take the this one, this is d, right? This is x. This is square root of x squared plus d squared, right? Over there, when you do the integral over the different element, this thing is changing, right? The x, by, when the x changes, the distance changes. Over here, the distance doesn't change. So it's a little easier integral. The r squared, which is the distance from here to here, right? Well, this thing is the same distance. This is the same distance. So the only thing that is changing is the angle, the theta. This, this is the angle right here. You see, that's the angle. So if I draw that a little bigger, it's going to be this is df, this is theta. So this is also going to be theta right here. So if I take an element over here versus taking an element down here, versus taking an element up there, the only thing that's changing is the theta, but not the r. So I could factor out the 2k r squared and the q2, and the only thing left in the integral is dq sine theta. d 
GQ sine theta. And then the next thing I do is express the dq as lambda dx, right? Linear charge density times the length of the little piece. So that's the same thing that we did last time. dq is lambda dx. And the dx, the lambda comes out if it's a uniform charge. So it comes out 2kq2 uh, lambda over r squared. And you're left with dx sine of theta. And then we got to do one more step because you can't integrate when you have the two variables are different. You got to relate the x and the theta. Well, the x is the distance from the, uh, I guess we, we can say it's the distance from the center to the, to the piece, right? The x is that distance. So the x is equal to r times theta, OK? r times uh, theta. <clears throat> or you could say the x is the distance from, uh, from, the down, from here to here. In this case, it really doesn't matter how you define it. So x is r theta, and then the dx is going to be r times uh, d theta. So the dx is the thickness of this little piece. And the relationship between dx and d theta, d theta is like this thing here. Imagine taking the, the a little portion. d theta is the angle there. It's like this. dx, dx is the length of this. You see? d theta is the angle. You see what's going on? So I'm trying to show you on a blowing up the picture so you can see. The dx is the length of that piece, and the d theta is the angle that it subtends. OK? So dx <coughs> is equal to uh, r times d theta. So basic, simple geometry. So then you get the r times d theta, you put it here, and then the r comes out. And then you're left with d theta sine of theta. And now you can integrate that. Okay? And the limits of your integral are going to be 0 to um, from here to here. Remember, you're not going to integrate the other part because you already included the other part by doing double here, OK? Yeah, you, only, you already included symmetry. So you're going to integrate 0 to pi over 2. And uh, you factor, uh, let's see here. Two k q two, the r cancels with the r on the bottom, and then lambda is the total charge of the rod divided by its total length. So uh, q q one divided by l is the lambda, and then the integral uh, I believe should come out to be one. The integral of sine from zero to pi over two is one because the integral of sine is uh, negative cosine. And then this one uh, is going to be uh, negative cosine of pi over 2 minus negative cosine of uh, 0. So this one is 0. And then this one is plus plus, which is uh, 1. So that one just disappears, and it ends up being a simple integral. So the only thing left is 2k q2 q1 over rl. 